In this example, I'm going to go over some basic normal anatomy and a little bit of pathology of the glenohumeral joint on MRI. On the left side is an axial proton density weighted, a fluid sensitive sequence with fat suppression. And on the right, you can see the coronal oblique T1 weighted scan. You can see the orientation of that T1 weighted scan relative to the axial here and uh, scanning back and forth. I'll stop on the coronal. But the axial image is what I want to focus on. And as we go to the axial and scroll up and down, you can see the upper sections will go up through the AC joint shown here. And then we'll come to the upper part of the glenohumeral joint, region of the biceps anchor and superior labrum, and then down into the mid-glenoid region here, glenohumeral joint, down into the axillary pouch. I'm going to switch this one to the sagittal image for a minute. Now I've uh, switched to the sagittal orientation here on the right-hand panel. And if we're in the plane that's uh, parallel to the glenoid face here, you can see the glenoid itself. This is anterior, posterior, superior, and inferior. And this is important because the conventional clock face approach to the glenoid is that 12 o'clock is the uh, superior position, and then anterior is going to be the 1, 2, 3 o'clock position, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. The convention being that the coracoid is always anterior, and the coracoid is always the 1, 2, or 3 o'clock position. So if we look at the orientation of the glenoid on axial view compared to the sagittal here, uh, the key thing about labral evaluation is to know exactly where one is. Because in this anterosuperior quadrant of the labrum, there can be normal variance. And how one interprets that depends on whether there's an abnormality anteroinferiorly or superiorly. Just for some basics, let's focus on the left-hand image for the time being. And uh, we'll zoom in a little bit here. And what I want you to focus on is the contrast differentials that we see here. The fluid within the joint itself is very bright on this fluid sensitive sequence. The articular cartilage of the glenoid is seen as this intermediate gray signal intensity, similar to the cartilage on the humeral head. And as we scroll up and down, you can see the anterior mid labrum here and going more anterior and inferior. Here's labrum here. There's an ad additional structure <clears throat> that tracks along the labrum here. Slight band here, little triangular structure here. That's uh, probably the middle glenohumeral ligament. And it's important not to confuse that for the labrum itself. The anterior labrum should be relatively sharp. Um, but in this case, this structure parallels the labrum. And the majority of the labrum is accounted for by this structure here. Notice that in the normal labrum, you can see low signal at the base of the labrum adjacent to the cartilage. Sometimes you see the cartilage undercutting it. Contrast that with the posterior labrum. Here we are in the mid glenohumeral joint, articular cartilage. Here's posterior labrum here. And on one or two sections, we see very bright signal intensity coursing through the labrum, through the base of the labrum, back towards the uh, uh, edge here, and that's on several adjacent cuts. So the labrum triangular itself is relatively intact, but this structure is detached at this point.